Here's another sample problem on Newton's second law of motion that involves pulleys. Two blocks attached by a light, inextensible string that passes over a smooth pulley. They are held stationary and suddenly released. First question, determine the acceleration of each block. So we have here the pulley. One mass is 6 kilograms and the smaller mass is 4.5 kilograms. Now, common sense would tell us that the 6 kilogram mass, since it's actually heavier, would go down. On the other hand, the 4.5 kilogram object is going to go up as the 6 kilogram object goes down. Now, in solving problems like this, it is very important that we consider these two objects as one or we consider it as a system. So by system, we mean that instead of thinking about two objects, we are going to consider the 4 kilogram mass and the 6 kilogram mass as if it's just one object. Now in the system approach, in order for us to be able to solve for the acceleration, we will look into the forces that are external to the system. So the reason why there's movement in this system is that the 6 kilogram mass is heavier compared to the 4.5 kilogram mass. So if these masses were equal, we cannot expect any movement in the system. So basically the driving force that causes the system to move is the weight of the heavier object, the 6 kilogram mass. So we're going to call that um, weight 1 and that is equal to mass 1 multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Now... This other object right here actually prevents the 6 kilogram mass from going down. So it counteracts or it resists this, motion, this downward motion of the 6 kilogram mass. So that is equal to the weight of this object right here, which we're going to call W2, and that is equal to M2G. Now, in order for us to be able to solve for the acceleration of each block, so we would say F net is equal to... M A, and since we are considering these two objects as a system, so the F net that we'll be looking into would just be the driving force that causes the system to move and the force that stops the system from moving or the force that resists the motion of the system. So the driving force of the system here is the weight of the heavier object. And we are going to consider that to be positive because it is the driving force. So this has, to be, uh, this has to be positive. On the other hand, the weight of the 4 kilogram, 4.5 kilogram mass stops it from moving. So it is the resistive force and we will have it negative. So our F net then becomes W1 because that is the driving force minus W2 because that is now the resisting force and our mass would be the total mass of the system because we're considering because we are considering them as one so we will have the total mass of the system I'm going to call that MT and then we will have the acceleration whatever acceleration that we will be able to solve here is the acceleration of both masses because after all they are moving as one so the acceleration that we will have here is actually the acceleration of each block now let us substitute our values w1 is m1g minus w2 is m2g so our mass total would just be m1 plus m2 multiplied by the acceleration so our M1G is 6 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 minus M2, which is 4.5 kilograms times 9.8. That is equal to the total mass of the system. That is 6 kilograms plus 4.5 times the acceleration. And you put these values in your calculator, we'll have that acceleration is equal to 1.4 meters per second square. And that is the acceleration of each block. So once again, in order for us to be able to solve for the acceleration of 
um, the objects in a pulley, the first thing that we need to do is to treat it as a system. And once we treat it as a, as a system, we ask ourselves, what is the driving force that causes the system to move? So it would always be the weight of the heavier object. And in this case, uh, since the 6 kilogram is the heavier object, so the weight of it is going to be the driving force and we will have it as a positive force. On the other hand, the resisting force would be the weight of the lighter object. So as we expand Fnet, the driving force will be positive and the resisting force would be negative. And the mass that we are going to use here would be the mass of the total mass of the two objects since once again we are considering it as a system. Part B. Calculate the tension in the string. So now that we have solved the acceleration of the block using the system approach, in solving for the tension of the string, now we have to look into the object individually. So if we are going to solve for the tension of the string, we could either use the 4 kilogram block or the 6 kilogram block. Either way, the tension, whichever mass that you're going to use, is going to be the same. So let's look in so let's try to solve so let's try to solve for the tension of the string using the 4 kilogram block. So to do so, it is very important that we draw the free body diagram of the object. So for the 4 kilogram block, we already have its weight going downward. And since this object is connected to a string, then therefore there has to be tension in that direction. And that is tension. Now we know that the 4 kilogram mass is uh, moving upward. So therefore its acceleration is actually going to be positive because this 4 kilogram block is once again going upward so it is accelerating upward so to solve for tension let us still use newton's second law let me just write this down solving for tension solving for t using um, m2 which is the 4.5 kilogram block. So we'll have F net is equal to MA. Now, once again, for F net, we look at the forces acting on uh, M2. So we have tension, positive, and we have the weight of the 4.5 four kilo, kilogram object directed downward. So tension will be positive, T minus the weight of the second object is equal to the mass of object 2 multiplied by the acceleration. Once again, the acceleration here is positive because the 4.5 kilogram block is going upward. So let us substitute the values now. So tension is what we need to solve for. We'll have a T minus the weight of the object, which is M2G plus. Now the mass of the object that we're going to use here is just M2 because again we are looking at them individually not as a system so it's just the mass of the second block multiplied by the acceleration so let us substitute the values we have tension the mass of the second block is 4.5 times 9.8 is equal to 4.5 times the acceleration which is 1.4 this is what we have solved er in the previous question. Hence, tension, put these values in your calculator, you'll get that tension is equal to 50.4 newtons. So this is tension. Now let us solve for tension using M1. Let's put it on this side. Solving for T using M1. So if we look at M1 now, which is our 6 kilogram object, the forces acting on it would be, we have the weight of the 6 kilogram object, and we have tension that is directed upward. Now we know that the 6 kilogram object is actually going down, therefore its acceleration, its acceleration should be negative. So once again, the acceleration of the six kilogram block 
is going to be negative because this six kilogram block is going to accelerate downward. Now we solve for tension. Still, we start with F net is equal to MA. And our F net, so tension is directed upward minus the weight of the first object. So I'm going to call it W1 is equal to the mass of the first object, M1, multiplied by the acceleration. And once again here, since this mass is going downward, so its acceleration should be negative. So we substitute our values now. I mean, we expand tension. W1 is just M1G is equal to M1 times the acceleration of the system. So tension minus M1 is 6 kilograms times 9.8 equals 6 kilograms times the acceleration. Again, it has to be negative 1.4 because this mass is accelerating downward. And if you plug these values in your calculator, you would still get 50.4 newtons. So either way, whether you use M1 or M2, you will have the same values for tension, but take note that the acceleration when the object is going upward, the acceleration for that object is going to be positive, whereas the object that is going downward should have an acceleration that is negative.